What's your school uniform, Lauren? Oh, it's full. Full? Aye, in a sorter. A sorter? You can. It's Clara Ed. Speak properly, Lauren. I was six and I was scunnered. Nay only was I speaking properly. I'd thought of three adjectives, but I only needed one. But you see, the minute I set fit in a classroom, I was taught to speak properly. Quine became girl, breeks became trousers. And if you spilt your mince and totties or your school uniform at dinner time, well, it was missing because it was dirty. Nay, clarted. Up until I started school, Doric was I spoke. Now, often I can't about language was wrong. The term Doric actually originates from ancient Greece. It was used to describe the rural dialect for the urban dialect of Athens. Now, it's rumoured it was adopted by us Scots due to the similarities in urban and rural divide between the Highlands and Lowlands. But it's not just the history we can't agree on. For decades, folk have argued whether it's a dialect or a language. Refer to it as Doric, no, refer to it as North East Scots. Och, if you speak it, you must be pro-independence. These distracting arguments are only gone to aid its demise. So instead, I want to spend my energy of the day in a why I believe will keep it alive. By speaking in Doric, not just about Doric. In my earliest memory of being taught to speak properly, my teacher just innocently assumed she was correcting my vocabulary. But what she actually did was ignite an internal battle. A battle that so many of us in this room, in the northeast and further afield, face. Fun is it okay to speak our mother tongue? And when do we switch it off? If we switch it off, are we given in to this idea that our culture, our background, our identity is somehow inferior? Or if we choose to keep speaking it, are we destined for a life of ridicule and prejudice? For me, there was one why to find out. I moved to London. <laughs> With my teacher's words still ringing in my lugs, I embarked on the ultimate lesson in learning to speak properly. I escaped the shackles of smart tune living to the home of the English language. What a fancy job in the fashion industry. Doric can do one, I thought. Except, soon realised, London was never going to teach me how to speak properly. Because in London, nobody speaks. For two years, I put up with silence and sore faces on the tube. For two years, I was feared of speaking to strangers in case they thought I was feel. For two years, I stumbled my way through daily life, constantly correcting and filtering my speech in a bid to muzzle my mother tongue and to prove to that teacher that I, a young queen for Cullen, I could speak properly. Until March 2017, I was preparing for the biggest presentation of my career. I had to present the spring-summer collection to a team of stakeholders at Burberry, one of the world's largest fashion brands. I had the figures memorised. My outfit was on point. My belly was rumbling on nerves. <laughs> to elevate this season's trench coat, we've resized the pooches. I could tell their raised eyebrows were nay in recognition of my pioneering presentation. What was the proper word for pooches? For two years, I'd successfully switched fly cups, coffee breaks, bosies for hugs, but the facade was officially over. No longer could this young quine for Cullen fool the global fashion market that I can't how to speak properly. It was time for plan B. About a month after that, Burich in the boardroom, I embarked on a new adventure. I sold all my possessions, except the clays on my back, We one intention. I would return when I felt less of a gipe and made of a grown-up, because grown-ups speak properly. I got as far as Melbourne, Australia. Clarted in Factor 50, I spent my last remaining dollars on an overpriced cappuccino. But it was so I could use the cafe's Wi-Fi and aircon. Penniless, I was sat frantically job searching. Did fit 
any backpacker would do in this scenario, applied for absolutely often. Pastry chef, lorry driver, furniture removal, CV sent. The next day, I received a phone call. Hi, Lauren, we've received your job application. We'd, we'd love you to come in for an interview this afternoon. Okay, great. Can you remind me what the job was again? It's working for a construction company here in Melbourne. Construction? Great, I'd be delighted to attend the interview. I'll see you this afternoon. Needless to say, the closest I'd came to construction was Barney Wikia flat pack. <laughs> Bit ever the optimist, I raked out my bonniest frock for the backpack, jumped on the bus to the interview. I was greeted by a cheerful wifey. She ushered me into the interview room and I began giving myself a wee pep talk. Now, Lauren, use your best phone voice. Speak properly, because you really need this job. Otherwise, Goodbye, visa. Hello, home time. Hi, Lauren. So you managed to find the office okay? I no bother at all. I did it again. I was black affronted. Where's that accent from? She interrogated. It's from a little tiny place northeast of Scotland. It's called Cullen. Probably never heard of it. Cullen? Cullen? I used to go to Cullen on my holidays as a child. Really nice people. Really good ice cream. When can you start? <laughs> and that was it. No questions on my skills or experience. She tanned me at face value. For fit, I intended to be a one-month fling with construction to top up the hostel fund, turned into a six-month love affair. It allowed me to save enough money to travel in other dozen countries. And it was during this time I realized something. No matter if I met, whether it was on a night bus, Vietnam, markets in Malaysia, nobody taught me to speak properly. Not one person made assumptions about my upbringing or my intelligence based on the why I spoke. To these strangers, Doric is fit marks me, me. So why is it then, the only time I've been asked to mask my mother tongue is in my own country? Why is it we are taught for such a young age that Doric cuts you back? Oh, you want to gang far if you can't speak properly. In a world that is more diverse and accepting than ever, ask yourself, why are we censoring our own speech? Is it because, oh, traditionalists, are we intimidated in case they correct our pronunciations and our spellings? Maybe... We are fear of the nationalists because they want us all flinging cabers and screaming for like. <laughs> Maybe it's our peers. We didn't want to face them because they'll label us as chukters for merely accepting far we grew up. For me, keeping Doric alive is vital because I don't want my parents growing up ashamed of their heritage like I was. Nobody should be made to feel that speaking English is superior to their mother tongue. Why can they not go hand in hand? Because when humanity loses a language, we didn't just lose some tradition. We lose the potential for greater diversity. Diversity in art, in music, in literature, and we are given in to globalization. Oh, the 7,000 languages spoken in the world today, over 3,000 are endangered. Doric is just one. Indicated by the reed dot in the map behind me, Doric is just one of the 3,000 languages that are predicted to be extinct by the end of this century. So that means we've 78 years to sort it out. 78 years to get a reed dot removed. Sounds easy. But from the life expectancy of a male in Scotland is 74, and a female is 78, that means the last Doric speaker is already born. How would you feel if that was your bairn, your niece, your pupil, the our language, a vital part of our cultural identity, could die with them because they were unaware of the importance of passing it on. Now, my life has been spent stumbling from one social faux pas to the next, desperate to spend every penny I earned trying to escape where I came from, trying to fit in somewhere else. 
But if we are continued with this attitude, one for our culture should be suppressed and they celebrated, then the future Odoric is destined for tote bags and cringy coasters. Doric will die. So how do you keep a language alive? Well, Urian ancestors, or fisher folk, farmers, they kept it alive by documenting their day through poetry and bothy ballads. Now, again, those industries have evolved, but do we need to continue to document our day using the wee devices we keep in our pooches? We're a generation that can't even part with these things when we poo. But are we, are we communicating now more than ever? Are we maximizing their potential? Because while we no longer gather round, belting out bothy ballads, we do gather in online communities. Why should Doric be banished for a hen closed doors when we hate access and influence to an endless audience at the touch of a button? Your tweets, your TikToks, your texts, they have the power to be a digital archive for the next generation. And the mayor those generations see and hear Doric in the mainstream online, the mayor they'll be encouraged to speak it offline. In the online world nowadays craves authenticity. So let's stop telling folk to filter their mother tongue. And let's stop telling ourselves to filter our mother tongue and ah. When you leave here the day, you have a choice. You could be part of the generation that helped to get your read dot removed. Or you could be part of the generation did nothing, deemed it somebody else's problem. But nay six year all should believe that speaking their mother tongue is wrong. Nay six year all should believe that the only key to success is speaking properly. It tain me nearly 30 years, but I realized actually the ultimate key to success is being yourself. And that despite our different languages, despite our different cultures and our different backgrounds, we are all Jock Thompson's bairns. Thank you. <laughs>